Creator blessed, and in our hearts take up thy rest. Come with thy grace and heavenly aid to fill the hearts which thou hast made. To fill the hearts which thou hast made. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I was about five years old, and the small little town where I lived in Poland was getting ready to welcome the bishop who was going to visit. And that's a big deal in a small little town. So everybody was getting ready. And a group of older ladies who kind of ran everything and told everybody what to do in the town and in the church, they decided that the best way to welcome the bishop was to have a little child recite a poem to the bishop. So they needed to choose a little child to do it. And guess who they chose? <laughs> the most outspoken one. So I learned the poem and I recited the poem to the bishop, welcoming him to the church. And at the end of that, he picked me up into his arms and he says, now you've said this poem so well. What is it that you want to be when you grow up? He says, do you want to be a priest? And I said, no. <laughs> Well, what is it that you want to be then, he says. And I said, well, I want to be God. Oh. <laughs> See, I'm aiming high. <laughs> I want to be God, I said. And he says, well, how do you know? How do you know that you want to be God? Why is it that you want to be God? And I said, I want to be God because God does not die. And I do not want to die. So I want to be God. And he says, well, how do you know this? And I said, you got to think. <laughs> now, the, the church was silent. Can you imagine this? Everybody was silent. All those uh, gossiping old ladies were shocked. <laughs> they were left speechless. <laughs> well, I got home, and my grandfather, who never went to church, okay, because he was a member of the Communist Party, he never went to church. And, but, you know, news travels fast. Small town, big gossip. So he had heard before I got home what I had told the bishop. And he says to me, he says, I heard you told the bishop you want to be God. And I said, yes. And he says, well, if you want to be God, we're going to have to nail you to the cross. <laughs> and all I could think of was this big cross that was in front of the church and it did not have a body on it. And I said, oh, no. They're going to nail me to the cross. I don't want it. So I said, no, I don't want no, no. Uh, But if you think about it, the Bible says from the mouth of children, the truth shall flow. From the mouth of babes, the truth flows. Each and every one of us has been made in the image and likeness of God, which means little less than God himself. God made us. God is where? Somewhere out there floating around? No! God is in us. Where is the Holy Spirit that Jesus talks about the gospel in the gospel today? Where is the Holy Spirit? Around there floating somewhere, you know, the dove? No, 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 no. The Holy Spirit is in you. The Bible says we are the temples of the Holy Spirit. You are a temple of God. You want to see God? Look in the mirror. Which also means if you want to see God, look at your husband. <laughs> I know that's hard sometimes. <laughs> but, you, it's, but ladies, it's hard for him to see God in you too. <laughs> oh yeah. No. Well, anyway, I'm getting off topic, which I never do, but <laughs> in Jesus, in Jesus Christ, we met God. And we meet a God who is nailed, crucified, 
If you want to be God, we're going to have to nail you to the cross. You see, we want to be like God. It's nice we hear, you know, to be a temple of the Holy Spirit, to be the body of Christ and all that. You want all of that, but you want it without the cross. In other words, you don't want to be nailed. You don't want to be nailed. Who here wants to be nailed? Nobody wants to be nailed. And part of, part of the experience of this life, being the temple of the Holy Spirit, being God, is the experience of being nailed. Because God is after developing us into his disciples, hmm? sanctifying us. And part of that is the cross. I wouldn't be the priest I am today on this, the 12th anniversary of my ordination to the priesthood. And I am so overjoyed that I get to tell you that it is my anniversary of my ordination to the priesthood. It, it, I'm like breathing relief. You know, when I was here in Vegas, uh, November 15th uh, fell, which is my birthday, by the way. November 15th. <laughs> uh, it fell on a Sunday. And I was living at the time with a priest uh, here in Vegas. And uh, I was expecting, you know, to be greeted in the morning with, you know, happy birthday, how wonderful and all this. But no. I'm there making my coffee in the morning and he comes in and says, don't you dare tell the people today that it's your birthday. <laughs> Obviously ruined my day, right? <laughs> Obviously. Uh, don't you dare tell the people that it's your birthday. Well, I can tell you that it's my anniversary today. Because <laughs> we're in divine mercy church. PNCC, or let freedom ring. <laughs> so I'm very happy to be able to tell all of you that this is my 12th anniversary of my ordination to the priesthood. You're looking at these photos, uh, uh, all sorts of photos of my family. Yeah, there, okay. Uh, you look so different. Yeah, I do look different. I, I weighed 325 pounds at one time in my life. You can see in the photos there. That, that, <laughs> that's me in that picture too. <laughs> but uh, thank you to Corinne for putting the uh, slide together. Thank you so much. Thank you so, thank you so much. Uh, so very um, thankful for that. And part of, I wanted this, this to be up, okay, for you to see it. Because it's a process. I wouldn't be the priest I am today if it wasn't for these experiences. Some of which you can see, like weighing 325 pounds at one part, point in my life. Huh? Like coming here to the United States as an immigrant. Huh? Like my mother leaving me in Poland and then having to leave my, my grandmother. Uh, going through the seminary experience. 12 years that I spent in the seminary. You know, almost not making it, having to change seminaries. Then the divorce of my parents, which you see some pictures there. Uh, you know, all of these nailing experiences haven't been bad because there is no experience of being nailed to the cross that isn't bad for us, that is bad for us. There's nothing that God permits that isn't good for you. None of these things that I, I can go through a list here has been bad in my life, looking bad, because they have all worked for the good to turn me into the person I am today. Hmm? I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for all those experiences. Even that thing, you know, of it, on my birthday, experiencing the cruelty, the harshness, 
that human beings are capable of. It was all good, you know, it ruined my day, obviously it ruined my birthday, but, you know, it taught me valuable lessons. The experience of the cross isn't bad for us. If you want to be like Jesus, you got to be like Jesus, which means carry your cross. Isn't that what he said? Pick up your cross daily and follow me. Unless you do that, you ain't worthy of me. So whatever it is that you have in your life, you know, you're supposed to carry it. When I was in the seminary and reflecting on these 12 years that I've been a priest now, I was ordained May 22nd, 2010. How wonderful that the first anniversary of my priestly ordination at Divine Mercy Polish National Catholic Church in Las Vegas falls on a Sunday, for there is no coincidences. There are only God incidences. It's a God incident that we get to celebrate my priestly anniversary today. On a Sunday, it fell on a Sunday. Huh? How wonderful. Hmm? And I think somebody bought edible arrangements because they're pulling up. <laughs> right, Joe? Is, are they pulling up with a bouquet of... Yeah, bring them up when they... When they <laughs> up. I see. I, we'll get to share them all. Okay, I share. Okay. And I said, I don't need any gifts. I don't need you to bring me money or stuff. You know, the best gift is your presence that you came today. Thank you so much. Yeah, bring it to me. Okay. Wow. Okay. Wow, what an arrangement. Thank you. Who is it from? Let me see. It's big. Okay, no, I'll, I can read it. No, I see it. Okay, I see it. Wow, thank you. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. You know who it's from? It's from my mother. Oh. Wow. How oh, beautiful. Thank you so much. Oh. Uh, she knows, yeah, you could put it in there. And we'll share it. We'll share it after Mass with everybody. Think, wow. Right in the midst of the homily. Look at the back. You see the, 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 the truck just uh, arrived. That's amazing. She has perfect timing. Yeah. Look, it just arrived. Okay. God's timing is perfect timing. How fantastic, amazing, isn't it? Right in the midst of my homily. Uh, uh, so you've seen the pictures of 12 years. So you're all coming here because you're carrying stuff. Everybody does. You've been nailed many times in your life throughout all the experiences. When I was in the seminary throughout the 12 years, I wanted to quit. I said, I can't do this anymore. How am I going to be a priest? You know, I was carrying a lot of stuff because of my parents' divorce, because of all sorts of things that I get into in a lot of my sermons with all of you. And I said, I can't do this anymore. And I went to the rector of the seminary. That's the priest that's in charge of the seminary. And I said to him, I was at the time in Michigan, in Detroit, Michigan, at, at St. Cyril and Methodius Seminary in Orchard Lake, Michigan. That's the seminary I finished uh, in Michigan. And I said to him, I said, I don't want to be a priest anymore. I, I'm carrying way too much stuff. And he says, well, what is it that you're carrying? Empty your baggage here with me, he says. Empty your suitcase here with me. And I did. I emptied the contents of whatever it is that I was carrying. And you know what he said to me? He says, thank you for emptying the contents of your baggage here with me. From now on, you are not going to be carrying all of this stuff alone. From now on, I will be carrying all of this with you. 
and we carried it together until May 22nd, 2010. And he was there at my priestly ordination at St. John's Church in Napa, California, when I was ordained a priest by Bishop Daniel Francis Walsh, who incidentally at the time was the Roman Catholic Bishop of Santa Rosa, California, but he, if you look it up, Bishop Daniel Francis Walsh was the first bishop of Las Vegas. You think God has, you think God has a sense of humor? <laughs> and I'm in Vegas. Huh? And I was the last priest that he ordained. That was the last priestly ordination that he did, um, the three of us that were ordained that day, on May 22nd. But I made it! And so will you. Because you're coming here every single week to experience the hope that you are not carrying your baggage alone. alone. That I'm carrying your baggage with you. And if I, a priest, am carrying your baggage with you, that means God is carrying your baggage with you. You're not traveling alone with your baggage on this journey we call life. I'm traveling with you. Huh? You're not traveling by yourself. And as I made it that time, and as I made it so many other times, you will make it as well. Huh? That's why we come here each in every week to be filled with the good news that we can all use and always a big hello hello <laughs> I scared you didn't I <laughs> 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 <laughs>